Hello, it's Simon Zucci here, and in this video, I want to give you a tour of an HMO so you understand exactly what does an HMO look like and how should you set up your HMOs to give you fantastic cash flow. The reason I love HMOs is you don't need many of them to completely replace your income. Now, I'm here on Bourneville Lane in Birmingham, which is where I started really properly building my HMO portfolio. And I started investing back in 1995, not too far away from here, in Selly Oak, which is just next to Birmingham University. And the first property I bought, I lived in myself. I rented out some of the rooms. Then I moved out of it in 98, and I turned it into a small three-bedroom student HMO. And that was giving me great income. And I started to buy more and more properties. But it wasn't until about 2005, so 10 years after I'd been investing, I looked back at my portfolio and I realized that actually the HMOs had not only given me the best income, they were actually less work when you run them correctly. So I thought it'd be really valuable to show you exactly what an HMO looks like and some of the hints and tips you might want to pick up. So I do hope you enjoy this video. You might have noticed there's actually yellow lines outside the house. So there's no parking here, but it doesn't really matter because a about two minutes walk down this road is a bus stop on one of the major roads into Birmingham city centre. And then actually behind us is Bourneville train station. 60 second walk from the four HMOs I have on Bourneville Lane. And this is a direct link into Birmingham city centre. It's a 12 minute train that's every 15 minutes. And also going the other way, there's also a business park. So it's a great location for people living in my HMOs who want to get to work. And location's really, really important. And then just behind us is actually the Cadbury's factory, which also is uh, a great source of potential tenants in our property. There's also a huge Morrison superstore down the road, so it's very easy within two minutes walk for people to get their weekly shopping. So location is very important when you have HMOs. Now let's look inside the property. Come with me. So come on into the HMO. So first of all, I'm going to point out lots of little things that you need to know about. And it's very important that you have an interlinked smoke detection system to keep people safe in the property. And what you have to do is you have to get a suitable person to check that every week. Now, it could be your cleaner, as long as they're trained how to do it. And they just mark to say it's been tested every single week and the records are then saved in this fireproof box. So if there wasn't ever an incident, you could prove that actually the alarm has been checked on a regular basis, okay? Come on through. Um, now we actually have the stairs going upstairs. We'll go upstairs later on. There's a large storage cupboard here as well. And then this is the main living room. Now, in some HMOs, there is no communal space. Um, in some parts of London where things are really expensive, there may be no uh, communal space at all. Um, however, I like to rent to students and young professionals, and they'd be used to having a share in it. And actually, I believe that uh, an HMO should not just be a room and a house. It's all about having a community for people to live in. And this is the concept of co-living. So as you can see, um, this has been decorated. It's not the normal magnolia walls that you have with many HMOs. Um, and I think that's important because there are lots of HMOs in the market. You need to compete and look a bit different. And it obviously does look a bit different. Some people may not like this, but the whole point is we want it to stand out and be very different. Also over here, you'll notice that um, there's a table with enough space for everyone to sit around. This is not about people eating their dinner in their rooms. This is about people living together and having this community. There's enough space for people to sit around and have a social feeling and a nice flat screen TV for them to enjoy Netflix and all the other um, channels they can get uh, that we subscribe to for them. Um, now let's move through to the kitchen. I want to point out this as well. So it's very important, again, we talked about the fire alarm system. Um, you need to have these thick fireproof doors, they last for 30 minutes in a fire. They've got um, hinges on them to make sure they close properly. Now, we've propped a few of them open for the filming today. Uh, they shouldn't be propped normally, they should be shut uh, just to keep things nice and safe. And there's an intermittent strip as well which expands to stop smoke spreading in the event of a fire. So fire safety is really important uh, when you have an HMO, it's part of the licensing requirements. So this obviously is the kitchen, as you can see. Um, we have a back door here here to get out of the way. This is the fire escape to get out into the garden. Um, then we have a pretty standard kitchen. Uh, we've actually got a dishwasher in here, um, a good size sink. We've got the boiler tucked away. We have 
gas central heating that's controlled to make sure it's not on all of the time because that would be quite expensive. Um, we also have a double cooker. Now this property's got five people. Uh, this is one of my older HMOs from about 2005, 2006. We've actually just refurbished it. You've got to keep your property up to standard to make sure you're getting the right kind of tenants in and also maximizing your rent. So with five people living here, you can't just have one small little cooker because people will worry about, well, how long is it going to take for me to cook? Am I going to be able to cook what I want to? So we have five, we've got the induction hobs, so five hobs on here, double oven as well. Uh, we've also got toaster, kettle, we've got a, a blender there for smoothies. Uh, we've got the obviously microwave and you'll notice there's plenty of cupboard space. Extractor fan to take out all the smells. Um, we, we kind of thought this through and this is not a huge kitchen. Uh, in some properties people might have a large kitchen diner which means they don't have to have a living room. So that room we've just been through could be converted into a bedroom to give you extra revenue if there was enough communal space in a big kitchen. Now, this particular property doesn't have that luxury unfortunately. So come on through um, and you see we've got two fridge freezers. I want to make sure that every person has their own shelf so they, they don't get the food mixed up and also they've got plenty of freezer space as well. And then also we have a uh, washer and a dryer and again plenty more cupboard space. Storage is really important because people have lots of stuff with them. So come on through again. So this is the downstairs bathroom. So this is where any guests who come to who are not living here, they can come if they're visiting people and two of the bedrooms actually share this particular to a bathroom. So obviously we've got a, a heated towel rail, uh, we've got an extractor fan which is really important to make sure that you know it doesn't get um, uh, condensation in here. Uh, we've got a nice sink and obviously we've got a, a nice big walk-in shower and electric shower to make sure they've got hot water all the time. So that's the kitchen, let's go and have a look upstairs. Now I'm not going to go into the bedrooms uh, apart from one bedroom which is uh, an empty room, we have one void, we've just refurbished this, we're just filling it up again. Um, I want to keep the privacy of those tenants so I'll just show you one room to give you an example and it's one of the smaller rooms uh, which is why we haven't rented it yet. Anyway come on through. Okay so now let's start looking at the rooms. So we have five rooms in this property. Something you need to understand, in an HMO, often you might buy a, a house that's got two reception rooms. One or even two of those receptions could be turned into bedrooms. So this was a front reception room. And what we've done, we've actually moved the stairs. So we've taken a little bit of room from this particular front room to put our stairs in because we had to put the fire boarding in to make sure there's a 30 minute escape tunnel in the event of a fire to make sure everyone could get out of the property. But let me show you this one room. This is one of the smaller rooms we have, but it is vacant so I can actually show you what it looks like inside. So here we go. Now it's important that when you have a room it's dressed. Don't just have a blank uh, mattress which doesn't look very attractive. So we put a duvet and a throw on here. Now we'll take all of these things out when the tenant moves in because they will bring their own stuff in but it's just helping someone imagine what it's like and actually I think we should probably get a picture to put on the wall there. Uh, we've got a reasonable size wardrobe with enough space and put the clothes in. There's a chest of drawers as well and in fact I'm going to speak to my property manager um, because I've only, it's my first time around this since the refurb. I think we should put a little desk in here because the idea of working from home is, is very popular these days obviously with COVID um, and you know having a desk space makes it a bit easier. There's also space in the living room for people to work from there if they want to have a bit of a change of environment. So let's go upstairs. This room by the way because it's a smaller one this rents for £510 per month okay. Let's go upstairs. The amount of rent you get very much depends on the size of the room and also the facilities. That particular room they share a bathroom with one other person so you can't quite get as much rent as you would if you had a fully ensuite room. Something to point out here, obviously there's a smoke alarm there, all the smoke alarms are interlinked. What that means is if it, one goes off in one room, they all go off to give people plenty of notice to get out of the property. And also there's some emergency lighting here on the stairwell, so that if all the power's cut out in the event of a fire, people can safely see where they're going and get out of the property in plenty of time. Okay, let's go upstairs. Now the other rooms are all tenanted at the moment and so we're not going to go into those but let me just tell you a little bit about them. So this is one of the larger rooms, this has its own ensuite, that means it's got a shower, a hand basin and a toilet and uh, the rent for this is 550 and it went very very quickly because a lot of people do like their own ensuite facilities. Okay, come on to the other rooms as well. 
This is the smallest room in the property. This rents for £500. Um, you've, got to be make, you've got to make sure that all your rooms uh, adhere to the minimum room sizes. Now, it does vary from council to council, but generally, uh, a single room has to be 6.51 metres squared, which is pretty small, but you've got to make sure it's big enough. And then a double room is 10.22 square metres. Then we have uh, another room here, and this room is £525. And then finally, we have a, an attic room. So this goes up into the attic. Actually, I think you can hear the tenants in there as she's working from home. And um, there's a, a really big, lovely room with two big Velux windows, lots of light in there. And there's also an ensuite up there. This room in the middle here, by the way, has also a shower built into the cupboard. So in other words, three of the bedrooms have their own showers and two of the bedrooms share the one bathroom downstairs. So five people, um, the rent on this property is almost two and a half, uh, 2,630 I think uh, a month when it's fully let. Um, I like to allow about 10% for voids. So if you take off 10% voids, I have someone managing the property for me, they get 8% plus fat, take that off. If you take off the bills, which is about 550 on this property, and my mortgage was just over 400, this property actually makes me about 1,100 pounds per month, which is what a good HMO should make about 1,000 pounds. If you've got a smaller HMO, maybe a three bed, what we call a minimo, um, it works in cheaper areas. It might make about 500 pounds. And if you have a really big HMO, 10 plus rooms, um, then that should be making two, three, even 5,000 pounds profit per month. So the, what we call a mega HMO. And obviously, if you're just starting out, you might start with a minimo or a smaller one, but if you're already investing in property, I'd suggest you really start thinking about these mega HMOs because one HMO, your next HMO could be enough to replace your income. So let's go downstairs again. So welcome back into the living room and I just want to thank you for watching this YouTube video on my HMO tour. I do hope this has been enlightening for you and give you some hints and tips for your next HMO because I believe HMOs is one of the best strategies to quickly build your income and ultimately replace the income you make from your job so you can start spending your time whatever you want to do. A lot of people think that HMOs are a lot of work and hassle and yes, an HMO is more work than a single let. But remember, you don't have to be the person managing the property. I don't manage this. In fact, this is the first time I've been back to this property for many, many years. We've just refurbished it. Someone else managed to refurb. Someone else puts the tenants in. And you know, I really don't have to come to my property because other people manage it. And it can be just the same for you. What that means is not only do you replace your income, we then have your time freedom to do whatever you want. So if you've liked this video, please hit the like button. Why not also subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon, which means you're gonna get notified whenever we bring out a new video. I love to hear your comments, what you think about the house, any questions you've got, please put those down below and I'll answer as many of them as I can. And also, if you wanna learn more about HMOs, I have some training, free online training in a lot more detail. All you have to do is click on the link in the description description below this video, the website is hmocourse.co.uk. So you can go to that website, click on the link below, register and get a whole load of extra free training. And I really think if you're not doing HMOs right now, you are massively missing out. And people say, yeah, but what about licensing and planning? And, and what about an oversupply? I talk about all of those things and show you how you can overcome those in the free training on the link below, hmocourse.co.uk. So click on that link right now, and I've actually lined up another video for you all about HMOs, some of my student case studies that will help show you just what you can do when you start using this very powerful and profitable strategy. As always, I encourage you to invest with knowledge, invest with skill. I'll see you in the next video. I do hope you've enjoyed watching this video. And look, if you want to learn more about houses of multiple occupation and how you can really profit using them, I've got some extra online training that I'd like to give you access to. So all you have to do is click in the link in the description below the video and you can come and register and get access to that training, which will give you far more detail and really help you save a lot of time and make some real shortcuts to make sure you're getting the next HMO property much, much quicker. So click on the link right now and come and register for that extra bonus training with me. In the meantime, I've also lined up another video here I think you'll find really useful. So until the next video, remember to invest with knowledge, invest with skill.